Good evening, good Shabbos, and welcome to our Friday night service. I need to remind all of you that this is being pre-recorded, just so you know. And we will begin our service with the singing of Avenu Shalom Aleichem. <laughs> Thank you. 
Praise be Adonai to whom praise is due, now and forever. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher bi Peroma Arim Varavim, Ochokmah Kotiach Sha'arim, Uvi Puna Mishane Itim, Umachalif et Hasmanim, Umisadir et Akokovim, Bamishmerotehem, Barakia Kirtsono, Bore Yom Valada. Godel o mitne choshech, ve choshech mitne o. Uma adir yom u medi yelada, uma adir ben yom u ben lada adonai tsevo ot shmo. El chai bekayam tamid yunok alenu leolam vaed, baruch at ha adonai hama'ariv arabim. Wisdom and wonder, passion and instruction, story and symbol, all these things your Torah gives to us. And the more we devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. What could be a truer token of your abiding love than this holiest of your works and the living language that gives it form, Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Okay, I am with Nemo Shamiria. 
Give us a place to rest, Adonai, our God. Bring us into shelter in the soft, long evening shadow of your truth. For with you are true protection and safety, and in your presence are acceptance and gentle love. Watch over us as we go forth. Prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace, over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch Adonai, haporei sukkat shalom aleinu, ba'al kol amo Yisrael, ba'al Yerushalayim. We continue with Yismachu.
אתה קדוש ושם הקדוש, וקדושים בכל יום יחללו הסלע, ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש. Praised are you, Adonai, the Holy God. Please be seated. You set aside the seventh day for your name, the pinnacle of creation, and you blessed it above all other days, more sacred than all festival times. So it is written in your Torah, the heaven and the earth were completed, and all that were raised. On the seventh day, God had completed the work that had been done, ceasing then on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, and ceased from all the creative work that God had chosen to do. Our God and God of our ancestors, be pleased with our rest, sanctify us with your mitzvot, and grant us a share in your Torah, Satisfy us with your goodness, gladden us with your salvation. Purify our hearts to serve you in truth. And your gracious love, Adonai, our God, grant us our heritage, your holy Shabbat, that Israel, who sanctifies your name, may rest on it. Praise to you, Adonai, who sanctifies Shabbat. We continue with Ritzeg. <laughs> Thank you. 
We offer special prayers for those who are ill, members of our congregation, friends of our members, members of our family, and all those who are suffering and stricken by the horrible disease that has taken over so many of our lives. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill. Let us mention in particular Arlene Steer, Nancy Freund, Ruth Pagurski, Andrew Lerman, Eileen Egan, Joshua Haran, Katie Pastor, Trudy Caruso, Zachary Pastor, Douglas Baker, Mark Brown, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, B. Einstein, Ralph Einstein. And we mention also, we can say names out loud if we want, other people whose names are not on the list. May the Holy One, blessed be He, be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them a complete renewal of body and spirit. And let us all say Amen as we sing together. Continue to bestow every goodness upon us forever, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. Let me share with you that I have spent an enormous amount of time in the past week, actually in the past several weeks, attending webinars online dealing with our present crisis. Some of these webinars deal with very, very practical concerns. When do we open the building? How can we open the building? How do we deal with our dissatisfied members who want, in fact, to be here? Others deal with more theoretical, or shall I say, theological issues. What are the religious consequences of pre-recording a service? Is this a real service? Some would say yes, and some would say no, and I don't want to have to choose right now because we are happy we are able to present this to you. But in terms of what we are doing and what we're not doing, for those of us who have ever acted in a play, and I certainly have, it's quite different from doing a performance on television, which I really haven't done. I don't count being interviewed on television. When you are in a play, there's an audience there. Now, I don't want to compare the congregation to an audience, because the congregation is supposed to be participatory. But there are real people and a real response. And if done from a very historic, traditional perspective, 
A Jewish service involves an enormous amount of response. What the person who is leading the service says, what the congregants say and do and when. A lot of the dynamic of this, unfortunately, has been lost. I give one example, and I've spoken about it on many occasions and will continue to do so. We have developed the custom of asking everyone, mourners and non-mourners alike, to stand up and say the Kaddish together. I know there are all kinds of explanations for that, but I think the real explanation is that people who are mourners are awkward if there's a congregation of 300 people and there are two mourners, they're awkward standing up by themselves, and worse, if they're not comfortable with the words. But the Kaddish isn't just something one says or recites. There is part that the person who is saying the Kaddish says, and part that the congregation responds. And I offer again, and we're talking about the university coming up soon, a class on this. The reading, the response, the back, and the forth. Or another example, staring me right in the face on this bima, is a chart for blessings for the reading of the Torah. Before the reading of the Torah, the person who has the aliyah, the person who's called up, says, Barhu et Adonai Hamburah. That person is then supposed to wait for the congregation, all of them to respond, Baruch Adonai Hamburah Olam Ba'ed. Then the person having the aliyah says that again. In some more traditional congregations, the response isn't said seated, the people <coughs> stand up to say it. There's a reader response, there's a sense of community participation. You're a participant, not an audience. Now, I can't bring people in here at this time. And joking around this past week, I said, Oh, we could have a picture of the sanctuary. We have several pictures of the sanctuary full of people and sort of show that as we show this recording, but everybody would know it was false. And we really don't want to mislead people. I think I've misled people enough by having the background of the temple library uh, as part of the scenery, if I can put it that way, in some of the discussions and meetings I've been involved in where everything was recorded in our dining room. We don't want just to talk about the way we used to do things, whether it was a couple of hundred years ago or, can I say now, just six months ago? Because the last time we had a service in here was five months ago a service for full congregation. Things have changed, and we're developing new customs that no one would have ever thought of before, or, for example, that people would have vehemently opposed. When I first came to this congregation, just slightly over four years ago, the discussion of doing live streaming of our service was rather vehement. I don't think we have such opposition today. And I am happy that there are people who are watching, viewing, participating in this service right now, who for whatever reason wouldn't be able to get here even if we didn't have this pandemic. It's too hard to get here. Transportation is difficult. It's the wrong time. Well, when we had a big debate whether we should have the Friday night service at this time or that time or the other time, and no one could agree. So, if it's the bad time, you have your dinner, you come home, and then you see what's been pre-recorded. So, I hope something good is coming out of all of this. I hope we're all learning something new and different. I certainly am, not just from my experience, because of what I'm learning from what other congregations are doing, we rabbis are in constant communication and we're learning from each other and we're supporting each other. And that's what we need from our congregations as well. Support through this difficult time. We've got our imperfections, we're trying to deal with them. We're doing our best, but at the same time, we refuse to forget that this is Shabbat 
that we must pause and praise God for this opportunity to have special rest. Let us continue our service now with the adoration, and please rise as we open the altar. In nature's ebb and flow, God's eternal law abides. When tears dim our vision or grief clouds our understanding, we often lose sight of God's eternal plan. Yet we know that growth and decay, life and death, all reveal a divine purpose. God, who is our support in the struggles of life, is also our hope in death. We have set God before us and shall not despair. In God's hands are the souls of all the living and the spirits of all flesh. Under God's protection we abide, and by God's love are we comforted. O life of our life, soul of our soul, cause your light to shine into our hearts and fill our spirits with abiding trust in you. We remember at this time members of our congregation and our congregational family who are no longer with us. We mention first the recently departed Virginia Horn, Doris Zucker, Dorothy Jacobson, Leon Cooper. We remember those whose yard sets occur at this time, Esther Adler, Isaac Aronson, Charles Bardos, Barney Cole, Samuel Dubin, George Ginsburg, Samuel Robiner, Seymour Rudges, Benjamin Salk, Frieda Smith, Judge Carl Steer. We pause also to mention and say them out loud, friends, family members whose yard sites occur at this time whose names are not on the list. May their memories stay alive in our hearts, in our thoughts, and in our deeds. Please rise for the Kaddish. Yit Gadal vit Kaddash ame Rabbah, the Almadi Brotho te vi amnik mafute, the Chaye Fon Vyomechon, the Chaye de Fon Beit Yisrael, Bagalau bisman kariv imru amen. Yehei shmei rapa mebarach lehalam ul almei almei. Yit barach veyishtavach veyipaar vitromam vitnase vitadar vitalei vitalav shmei dekutsha briku. Leela miko berchata v'shirata tushbachata v'nechamata Damiran me alma be imru amen. Yehe shlama rapa min shamaya, bachayim alenu, be al koli Israel be imru amen. O se shalom be broma, o ya se shalom alenu be al koli Israel be imru amen. May the source of peace grant peace unto those who mourn and comfort the bereaved among us, and let us all say, Amen. amen. Please be seated, 
And I now call on Stuart Sinai, our president of the congregation, for some announcements. Thank you, Rabbi. And as always, uh, thank you for your astute commentary. For Anne and Ty, music and song outstanding. Without that music and song, it'd be like a banana split without the banana. It just is so important. <laughs> Part of reform, it's so wonderful. Now, I actually had some prepared notes. But as I was sitting here, I saw some, something in, the, in our Mishkan tefillah that I'd never noticed before. It's called study texts. And I thought it was so much more interesting and important than anything that I could really say. And, and one of them deals with Maimonides. So how many hundreds of years ago might this have been written? Now, we have a group of people here, our members, who have been extremely generous. And this is called the eight degrees of giving. And the higher, each higher one is, is supposedly more righteous than the first ones. And our people are right up at the last one, that is the most righteous. But I want to read this because the very last one applies to our pandemic right at this moment. So here's something that was written centuries ago, but applies so well to today. There are eight degrees in the giving of tzedakah, each one higher than the one before. To give grudgingly, reluctantly, or with regret. To give less than one should, but with grace. To give what one should, but only after being asked. To give before one is asked. To give without knowing who will receive it, although the recipient knows the identity of the giver. To give without making known one's identity. To give so that neither giver nor receiver knows the identity of the other. And the last, which is so applicable today, the very last, the highest, to help another to become self-supporting by means of a gift, a loan, or by finding employment for one in need, written hundreds of years ago. I'd like to say it to everyone a good Shabbat, a healthy Shabbat, and soon I hope that we'll be all together to enjoy being here as a community in this beautiful temple. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. And we now rise and join in the singing of the kitsch.
singing of Ain Calogano, page 322. <laughs> May the Eternal One bless you by protecting you. May the light of the Eternal One shine upon you and be gracious to you. May you feel the presence of the Eternal One and may you find peace. Good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. Thanks for joining us.